Welcome, and thank you for joining us today for another installment of Compelling Ministries blog and video blog. Thank you for taking your time, and may the Lord richly bless you. Today, as we begin, we're going to continue in our little series that we've been doing. Uh, just we've taken salvation and baptism and communion and prayer. And today we're going to talk about sanctification in just from the angle of a new convert. I don't have the hours to break down what really sanctification is and the process and to get into the Greek of it. And we're going to keep it very basic and simple but we're gonna talk about what is sanctification because it's very much in the Bible in the New Testament. And so let's, let's get into it. Well, what is sanctification? Well, if you Google a definition of it, it's gonna tell you that sanctification is the act or process of acquiring sanctity of being made or becoming holy. It's the process of becoming holy if you break it down. So in order to begin, let's get to the Word of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, in verse 30, it says, But of Him, of, of, of Jesus, you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Now, as we begin to talk about sanctification, let's... Let's declare something. Let's make something very plain right here. Salvation starts when you proclaim and you believe. When you proclaim you love for Jesus and your repentance of your heart and you believe it in your heart, that's where salvation starts. It's culminated upon your death in the ways of God, in the ways of righteousness, in the ways of holiness. I believe that you must begin and then you must walk it out. For he that endures to the end shall be saved. It's a process of walking it out, and that process of walking it out is called sanctification. Because it says right here in verse 30 again, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. He also became righteousness, and he also became sanctification and redemption. He became everything that we need and the more. He became that for us. Our life is in Jesus. The culmination of everything we're looking for is in Jesus. But verse 31 says that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. We, if we turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 says, sorry, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3, For this is the will of God, your sanctification. This is the will of God. You're walking it out, becoming holy as He is. The walking day by day of crucifying yourself to Christ, of what we celebrate in baptism and communion, of what happened in salvation, all of that, yes, but the day-to-day -day of walking it out. It says right here, uh, this is the will of God, your sanctification. Then it says, same verse, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Verse 5, or verse 4, that each of you should, should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. What vessel? Your body. Your, your body, what you're made up of, your spirit, man, your fleshly body. You possess in sanctification and honor. You must abstain from sexual immorality. I don't know how many people around right now in the church or around the church that claiming to be saved, claiming to be followers of Christ, even reading their Bible, but yet are living in known sin, living together, 
as a man and a woman that are not married, that are having relations, and I'm telling you right now, this cannot be. It is sin, and the sanctification process means I must turn from living in immorality. I must turn from all these things. I must, I must die to myself so that I can become alive in Christ. It says in verse 5, that I don't live in, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Verse 6, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified, for God, verse 7, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Again, let me just state this again. Salvation starts when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. But the day-to-day walking it out is the sanctification, becoming holy as He is holy. Yes, we receive it and we're made holy, but turning from sin every day is the sanctification, and I do that by His grace. I'm saved by His grace, and I walk it out by His grace. It's His grace that keeps me from sinning. It's not His grace upon my life that allows me to continue to live in sin, but it's His grace upon my life that calls me out of sin, out of the darkness, into the light, that the deeds may be exposed. Uh, the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, <clears throat> But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. He chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit. The Spirit of God will lead you. The Spirit of God will guide you. The Spirit of God will convict you. There's been times in our lives where when we, that inward knowing, that still small voice is speaking to you, directing you, it's whether you listen to that guidance and direction that makes the difference. The process of sanctification, the process of walking out the holiness day to day, of saying no to immorality, saying no to sin, saying no to the things of the world, and allowing the yes of God to take precedent in our life. The walking it out. There's a lot of people who claim a lot of things but it's the walking it out that shows the realness of it. Let's don't be false. Let's don't be claiming to be something we're not. Let's be real. And let's be a follower of Christ, a doer of the word, and not just someone who hears it. There will be many people on that day who will be condemned because they didn't walk it out. They didn't follow fully. They didn't trust you know, the, it, thus the argument comes of salvation and, you know, once saved, always saved, and this, that, and the other. Here's the reality. If Jesus is your Lord and Master, you're going to do what He says. If He's not your Lord and Master, you will not be obedient to Him. Obedience is what's showing whether He really do love Him or not. So many claim to love Him and they've confessed it, but again, did we really believe it in our heart? Because if you believe it, you will turn away from your sin and sanctification will have its work by the Holy Spirit who abides inside of us. The conviction of the Holy Spirit is what brings about the process of sanctification, of turning away from my sin. That's why so many people that have gotten saved around me that won't start asking you know, can I do this? Can I do that? And I will specifically tell them, I'm not going to tell you what you can or can't do. Let the Holy Spirit lead you in what you can or cannot do. Let the Bible teach us. And yes, I will explain, of course, what the Bible teaches about immorality. No, you cannot live with someone. You cannot have sexual relations with someone that's not your spouse, that's not your husband or wife. If, they're, if you're not married to them, you cannot, you know, there's certain things that we know according to the Word of God, but then there's other areas that people call gray areas. I don't believe there are gray areas. I believe there's conviction of the Holy Ghost area, areas. And as God convicts, you turn away from it. 
It may not be something that someone would call sin, but if, let's just say that you're, you're playing on a tablet too much or you're doing this or that too much and God is convicting you about the time, then for you it's wrong. Let the Holy Ghost convict you and turn away from it. If you're someone that can't stop watching movies, that just, if there's a movie, you have to go watch it. Let God convict you. Let God's conviction come upon you and set that standard. Let God's conviction by the Holy Spirit draw those lines in our lives. It, it says in 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter 1, verse 2, uh, he's talking to Peter, an apostle of Christ. He says, To the elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace be multiplied. The sanctification of the Spirit, the sanctifying work of the Spirit of God in our lives, the leading and guiding and direction of the Spirit of God inside of us then we as believers must follow the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit inside of us. There's so many areas of our life that God is trying to influence and bring correction in. But if we're not led by the Spirit, we're not going to follow. We're not going to know. We're not going to be obedient to. It says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Galatians 5, 16. I say then... Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17, For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. It says again right here, verse 16, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Again, there's so many people that come to me and say, well, I just can't seem to get the victory. It seems like... You know, Romans 8, 7 and 8, 9 there, I'm just living it out. Well, the Bible is very clearly written that if you follow the Spirit of God, He will lead you out of that sin. He will lead you into a life of holiness, sanctification by the Spirit of God, living that life of holiness, sanctified unto God. And it tells us in Romans 12, 1 and 2, that you know, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Well, in order to be led in the will of God, you've got to know the Spirit of God. You've got to know His voice. Jesus said, My sheep know my voice, and another voice they will not follow. Today, you may be a new convert or someone who's been around for a while. I am challenging you even right now to allow the Spirit of God to have His work in your life, the process of sanctification, to be sanctified, to be set apart as holy, that once you've confessed and once you've believed and you've repented of your sin and you've been baptized, to allow the Holy Spirit to come in and do His work inside of you, to say yes to conviction, to say yes to His insight and wisdom and revelation. Because again, right here in Galatians 5, verse 17 now says, For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. So many of us are fighting fleshly lusts and things that in this age that we live in, there's so much around us that we could lust, you know, with lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the boastfulness of the pride of life. But the Spirit of God is calling us into holiness. The Spirit of God is calling us into sanctification, be sanctified and set apart as holy unto Him for the workings of, of, of His presence for the workings of his will that which he desires for us let your mind be a place that's holy unto god let your body be a vessel that's holy unto god yes salvation he cleanses you he redeems you by by baptism you go down something old you come up something amazingly new in christ a new creation 
how wonderful that is, but it's the day-to-day -day process of being led by His Spirit, of walking it out. Let the Spirit of God have His work inside of you. Let His conviction speak to you. Let His insight and revelation for he knows all things anyway. He knows what you're struggling with. When you pray, believe and receive your answer. Let the workings of our Lord have his work in you. I want to encourage you even right now, say yes to the Spirit of God. Say yes to the sanctifying work that Christ at Calvary started for you and I. And when we call out in repentance and we believe and we confess it has begun don't stop there let the spirit of god have his work become that creation that he is proud of become that person who's holy and blameless at the coming of the son of man let the spirit of god have his perfect way inside of each of us even today i encourage you let's say yes to the holy spirit to his conviction to his maneuverings, to his, of our heart where he's trying to change us. Say yes to being conformed to his image. Let the sanctification of heaven have its work inside of us by the Spirit of God. Thank you for joining us today. May the Lord richly bless you and may the Spirit of God lead you into truth. May his guidance be upon you in a great and mighty way. Thank you for taking your time to listen to us today. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Jesus is king and the devil is still a liar. Thanks for joining us. If you liked the video, click the like and subscribe buttons. And don't forget to click the bell so YouTube will let you know when we've got new videos. Please feel free to reach out to us, leave a comment in the video below, or if you'd like to head over to our website, compellingministries.com, you can click on the contact link in the upper left corner. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear some ideas on what you'd like to hear about in our upcoming vlogs and podcasts. If you'd like to reach out to us by mail, you can check the description box below to find our address. Thanks again for joining us. God bless, and we'll see you in the next episode.